but good to have my friends all the way from Fairview and uh, got a got a lot of friends out there but I don't know when I I think they come here to love on me keep me from stealing AJ back I think they got a motive in mind but uh, we're just glad they're here and want you to just feel at home and enjoy yourself brother uh, Andrew is going to lead service for us and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer how many has got an unspoke quest but lift your hand all right, let's still remember the ones that's got uh, COVID still in the hospital. I hope you guys got all the message today. And uh, so let's pray for them that God will just help them. Got three in the church that's got uh, uh, their lungs are filled up with uh, COVID. Man, when you get it in the lungs, they say it's bad. It's hard to breathe. But let's pray for them. Brother Jay couldn't even breathe this morning when I talked to him. That made me nervous. So anybody got anything? Let's remember, what was his name? Uh, John Atkins. John Atkins, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. Let's remember the ones that's not here that should be here. Now, I know not everybody's got COVID. And there's about 100 out there that don't have COVID and they're not here. So let's pray for them. I don't know where they are. I'm going to have to go skin them. I'm going to tell them I got COVID and I've come see them. So they got a good excuse to quit. Hey, man. I'm that mean, too. Somebody else? All right. Let's stand. Let's pray for service. Pray for the preaching. Let's pray God to just uh, give us what we need. And I thought the kids uh, this morning come upstairs. Brother James, they had smiles on their face because they had a gift in their hand. And I thought about that, and I thought how that we should have a smile on our face because we've got the greatest gift God could ever give a mankind, and that's Jesus, his son. And I'm so glad for that. We should be smiling. If you're not smiling, you need something to smile about. You need to come down here and, and get saved. Amen? Because evident, you know, I, I went to church, and I don't want to get started preaching, but I've been to church with a lot of people, and I'm telling you, if I had to look at their face every day, I'd be down and out. But I will tell you, I got, I, I've got pains, I've got problems, I've got issues, but my, I've got a joy that's unspeakable and it's full of glory. I, I'm going to tell you what, when Jesus rides up in your heart, there should be a joy that the devil can't take. It may the devil take it out of your face, man. What? Man, he's already got you. Amen. Smile back at us. Amen. I ain't worried about your teeth. Hey, man, you're just a good hillbilly. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord. You've been good to us, and Lord, you blessed us this morning, Lord. We see lost people just crying and weeping as they go out the door, Lord. It just thrilled my heart. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'll be, Lord, able, Lord, to help them. Don't let them die lost. And oh, God. I pray, Lord, that you'll help my son. It's, it's set at home just, just uh, in his room. And, Lord, uh, drinking, Lord. Oh, God, would you just help him, Lord. Let him see there's a better way, Lord. There's a better day, Lord, if he just turn his life to you. Oh, God, I pray, Lord, that you'll help us, Lord. Uh, put that joy down in his heart, Lord. We pray, God. God, we ask you, Lord, just to help, Lord. I'm Father, the ones, Lord, that's out with COVID, Lord, strengthen them, give them courage. Brother uh, Hubert, Lord, strengthen him. Got 
cancer, Lord, oh God, that you'll help him. And oh, Lord, we pray for the singers tonight, Lord. I bless them as they sing, Lord. Anoint, Lord, and bless us as we stand before you, Lord, to preach your word. Let it be, Lord, a lamp to the feet and light to the path, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to touch us, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord, for our visitors, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for them caring enough to love us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for that. We give you praise and the glory for everything that's done and said. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, choir, let's, let's go. And uh, I'm going to start off what a lovely name again. Boy, that started off really good this morning, and I'm... I'm telling you, I, I feel God's already in this place. Let's enjoy ourselves. Let's put our hands together. And let's let's just enjoy it. Amen. Deep life, deep life.
Amen. It is good to be in the house of God tonight. They were singing that song, and I could sing about heaven for a million years. I love that. I, I'll tell you, when I, uh, when I witness to the guys at work and I talk to, talk, talk to them about heaven, and they just don't understand it. They think I'm nuts, and they just don't believe it, and they don't get it. But I'm telling you, I know that heaven is real, and I know that I'm going to make heaven my home. Amen. How many know that they're going to take citizenship in heaven one day? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to take evening offering up right now. If we could have another brother, or a few brothers come up for that. Yes, brother Tyler, could you ask the blessing? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this service. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the spirit we feel. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the singers and song. Lord, we ask at this time you bless this offering about this seed. Father, use it for the building of our kingdom. And Father, we just give you all the glory and honor and praise forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. There he is a God and only
tell you, those disciples believed it. Amen. Every one of them died a horrible death, except maybe one. But I tell you, there is a God. It's a God, church, and he is real. I'll tell you what, I'm thankful that I serve God tonight. I'm thankful that I serve a God who's not limited to do anything. I'm thankful that I serve a God who's still in a saving business, amen. He saved my soul, and if you're lost here tonight, he can save yours too, amen. Does anybody else have a testimony tonight? Surely God has been good. If all hearts are clear, today is the 27th. It is... Vicky and Teresa. Thank you. 
to see my sin upon the cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin the Lord's got this on my heart, and I know he's singing a lot. Um, if I could bring you up here, Brother Matt, and if you could play it for us. Um, we probably sang it so much that my, two, my four-year-old can now sing it. And if he wasn't so shy, I'd bring him up here with me, but um, the Lord is good to me, and I just want to praise him tonight for that. Um, I had COVID, and it was not, it wasn't a joke. And this morning I got back up here to sing and I had to take a couple breaths and I thought, man, don't take my voice from me. And then Sister Vicki said, could you sing tonight if we get caught? And I thought, oh, I'll try. Um, but I did okay. But I, I just want to praise him tonight and it's oh. been on my heart. And uh, I just, the Lord has been good to me. <laughs> I had all my children, my older children in church today. And it was, um, oh. I know that the Lord was, was working on my son. And so I just want to keep praising him. And uh, one day he's going to make it to this altar. Amen. Amen. What's this? Uh, I'll let you play. Um, uh, my Lord's taking good care of me. Okay. Do you remember my keys? I think <clears throat>
My Lord has taken good care of me. While we were sick, I held on to a few things. That song and, and, and a, some scripture right here, and I want to read it to you, and it's Luke chapter 6, verse 48. It says, He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Amen. When Teresa was sick, she was laying in bed one night, and I was, uh, I was sitting there doing the dishes, and I looked out the kitchen window, and I couldn't help. Uh, I felt like a, a demon had just hit our, our house. I don't know if anybody else has had that, uh, has experienced that, but I felt like I felt like hell itself had hit my house, and I held on to two things: is that song in this scripture, and it says that the man which built a house and he dig deep, and I'm telling you, I'm thankful that I dig deep, that my roots are deep in Jesus Christ tonight. I'm thankful that no matter what comes my way, that my house is set on a foundation upon a solid rock tonight, and I'm thankful that nothing. Nothing can tear my house down tonight. I'm thankful to the Lord tonight. I love the Lord. Is there any other testimonies tonight before we call the pastor? Come on. Amen. You be ready to sing. Amen. Boy, I'm telling you what, he just, well, turn your Bibles. To 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Now I'm going to tell you, I know Brother Andrew was right on the money. Amen. He's right on the scriptures. No, I'm, I'm uh, I like this and I'm going to read one verse. Really, I want to cover the whole bunch of them, but I would just, I want to just preach, uh, uh, Three nine, third chapter and ninth verse. Now I just want to three nine. Now this about blowed me out of the water. See, just just reading the scripture, how good it is. Listen at this. Three nine. Are you there? Say Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Glory be to God. <laughs> Three nine says, "For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry; ye are God's building." Yeah. Now, once you look at that second part of that, what's it say? Ye are God's building. He wasn't talking about this being His building. He's talking about who? Us, Us being God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. Yes. Amen. I just want to title my thought tonight, Final Inspection. Amen. Final Inspection. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Lord, we pray, God, that you just bless us, Lord, and help us, Lord. Hide us in a place, Lord, where we can just preach because I know there's coming a final inspection. Father, there's come judgment, Lord. And, oh, Father, I pray, God, that we pass, Lord, and the stamp will be on us, Lord, and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just, uh, I, Luke, Luke 6, 48 said, I had this on my notes, preacher. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat imminently upon it, that 
What should it do? It could not shake the house. For it was founded upon the rock. I'm glad for no shaking going on in me. How about you? Amen. Have you found yourself shaking? That's okay. But as long as the rock's not shaking. Yeah. No, listen. But the Bible said in the 49th verse, But he that heareth and doeth not is like the man without a foundation built a house upon the earth, a gift which the stream did beat evenly, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. I'm just glad to tell you tonight uh, um, that I've got a house that's been rooted, been planted upon a rock, uh, and I want to preach to you on the final inspection. Uh, uh, listen, the final inspection is very important uh, uh, when you're building. I don't know if we got, well, we do have a builder in this house, uh, I mean, but he'll know where I'm standing at tonight. Uh, I want you to understand, uh, I'm, I built two, uh, I built one church, and I built a couple of houses, but can I share with you, uh, I've got inspections from the very beginning of foundation work uh, uh, all the way up to the framing. I got all, all the uh, electrical and plumbing inspection. I got all the way up until I got it all the way done to get the final inspection and I failed. You know what? They came in and said this is not the code. This is not the code. This is not the code. Man, you talk about making me mad. It's a sad thing. You think you're going to get mad one day when you stand before the almighty judge uh, and he says you cannot pass the final inspection because of this, 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 this. You care less about what you've done. I want to know. I'm going to come to preach to you. Uh, I'm 2 Timothy 2, 19. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure for the Lord knoweth them that are his. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, I'm glad. God knows who you are. He knows. Uh, and he said, let everyone uh, that nameth the name of Christ uh, and depart from iniquity. Uh, aren't you glad? Make sure uh, how you know where you stand at. Oh, listen, the Bible said in that verse, having the seal. I'm glad today that we got to have a seal. The final inspection, when he does any inspection in a house, uh, uh, he'll mark it uh, and he'll uh, uh, put his little uh, uh, signature down uh, saying he inspected it and it passed. Uh, but thank God, uh, I'm, that's not going to give you occupies in the, in the, in the house. Uh, uh, you'll not be able to occupy yourself uh, until you get a final inspection. Can I tell you, uh, everyone, a house, a church, uh, I never could get a final inspection. I never could make that man happy. Uh, no matter what I did. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But I want you to know, you say, well, what did you do? I just moved in. I made home. I had church uh, without a final inspection. You know what? Uh, um, they never did come back and say, hey, you didn't have your final inspection. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I, I've been there 30 years now, never had a final inspection. But listen, when I get ready to sell it, what's going to happen? Yeah. Woo. Don't get quiet on me. Get spiritual. Because I'm going to tell you, you're going to live all your life. It'll be a sad thing. Some of you have been living for the Lord 30-some years. And, and what are you going to do when you get down to judgment? And he said, hey, wait a minute. I, I listen, wait a minute. You can't pass the inspection. I, I don't have the seal upon your heart. You have went through some great emotions. I, hey, you've, uh, you've sung in the choir. You've done all, all. You've been trustee. You've been a deacon. You've been, you've been a preacher. Hey, but you still don't have what you need. And I want to tell you, we've got a word world full of it. Amen. We've got world full of it. Churches are busted out seams, but they don't have the seal of final. Oh, but listen, we're not home yet. But I, I, is it all right if I preach a little bit? Listen, the Bible said in Corinthians 3 and 9, he said, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth. I want you to understand this. I, I'm there on, but let every man, every man take a heed how he buildeth upon it. <laughs> the Bible, let me tell you a story. Some of you have heard it, but I got a few new people here tonight. <laughs> Young man working with his father, building houses, 
And the father would watch the son as he built. And the son was always taking a shortcut. He was always doing just a shortcut to make it easier, to make it quicker. His father would tell him every day, he said, please don't do no shortcut. He said, because my name is on this building, I've got... I've got repetition. Hey, listen, I, I, I got somebody every time my, my name comes up on this building. I, I, listen, they know whether I've done a good job or done a bad job, done shorts, shortcomings, or I've done it right. That son never would listen. He'd always take that shortcut. The father once said, hey, son, I've got it. I'm going on vacation, and I'm going to leave you in charge. I've got this stick house I want to build, and I want you to be head over this house. And when I come back, I want to check that house out. He said, but I'm coming back, and, and I'm going to do an inspection on that house. I, and so the son, I, he, he took all the precautions I, on the outside. He made everything look good. I, I, but the hidden things, I, I, he made shortcuts I, so he could make more money. I, I, but listen, when the father come back I, and he began to look at the house, I, he said, boy, I, he said, boy, it looks good, son. I, I, and he said, now here's your keys. I, he said, you've got this house. This is your house. I, you built it for yourself. Hey folks, you're not just doing it for somebody else. You're doing it for yourself. You might well build right. I'm built upon something I'm that solid and glory. Hallelujah. Woo. Is anybody with me? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you, listen, the devil, I, he'll try to get us to take shortcuts. I, I'm getting sick and tired of the churches I, I, that's around us. I, I, that don't even care if they open up the doors. I, I'm just going to be mean tonight. I, and I don't have to try to do it. I'm just naturally mean. I, I, listen, I, I, I'm getting sick and tired. I, I hear preachers take I, and say, hey, I, it's not worth it. I, I, I'm afraid of COVID. I, I get your... Get your big man pants up and strap your shoes up. Hey, listen and get busy. We've got people dying and going to hell over a Democratic. I'm, listen, I'm telling you, I'm so stirred up. We better get it right or it's going to be wrong on that day. Yeah. You know, I like what this Bible says. Don't you believe the Word of God? Amen. We might as well take a stand. You say, well, how are we going to do it right? I mean, get it right. We've got to have the Spirit of God. He said, you don't have the Spirit. You're none of my mind. And I'm telling you what, we need something that's real, genuine, that'll keep us when the hell storms of this world comes against us and the, the great wind comes against us. This thing will stand because it's built it upon a rock. Man, I'm telling you. I told my wife we'd fight too much over stupid things. Let's get back to the good things. Mm. Well, I'm telling you all, somebody asked, I asked somebody, why you keep, why, why you shutting your church down so cold? We got COVID in it. I said, so, uh, listen, I've got cancer in mine too, but I don't shut it down. Amen. Listen, I got people dying of heart attack, but that don't make me shut her down. That's right. I'm not here to shut her down. I'm here to add something on. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Somebody said I took Sunday night away. You'll probably never start Sunday night back up. That's true. Because hmm. I remember when we had Saturday night services too. But you know we don't never do it. Oh, no, don't know Saturday night. That's family night. Come on. Come on. I'm getting the final inspection, folks, and I kind of wonder what he's going to say. Hey, you spend all day, I, I listen and spend two hours in church and you complain about it. Now, folks, I'm not preaching to you. I've got that camera back there. I've got a lot of people I'm talking to. Amen. <laughs> hey, man, I've got 200 people showing up on views. I, I listen, I'm telling them right now, I, you guys are good. You're here. I, hey, man, praise the Lord. I, whoo, hey, glory be to God. I, I, but we're getting a final inspection. And where are you going to stand at on that final inspection? You know, I'm nervous when that guy comes in from Richland County. Now, that's been 30 years ago. He'd walk through, make me nervous. I'd follow right behind him. <laughs> He'd look at things. Yeah, 
You need a ground fault right there. Why wasn't that on the print? Somebody missed it on the print. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's not my fault. Oh, yeah, it, it, it becomes your fault. And he got his little pad out. And every time he take that pen, I get ticked. Now, you need to get upset. Do I got anybody that's mad because... I mean, because I want you to know something. We used to come to church when church was church. Amen. We had people building upon a solid rock and that was building upon something that put a shout in their soul and their shoes and dance with peace. Amen. But oh God, help us. Help us. We become so relaxed that we're not worried about a final inspection. Yes. Now the Bible said in Ephesians 2 and 21, I like this, in whom... All the building fitly framed together, growth unto the holy temple in the Lord. Now, does anybody know what a prefab house is? You know what they do? Now, Dennis, he, he works for a big builder in Columbus. His name goes on it. People know, hey, them guys, great builders, they put out some good product. I mean, who builds a Wayne home? Who really wants a Wayne home? I'll be real honest with you. That's about as low grade as you can get. Schumacher's does a little better. But see, even the Amish, oh, everybody wants to brag on them, but they cut more shortcuts than you do. Boy, I'm a bashing everybody tonight. <laughs> but here it is. This is good. Final inspection coming. It makes me nervous when that guy comes in. But when you got these prefab homes, they they cut the material, they build the walls. And they put them on a truck. They've got them all measured out. They've got it all fitly framed up. And they bring them to the location where you want it at. It's all marked. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All the way down. All you got to be, you don't have to be smart to build. That's right. You just take A, put it with B. Take B, put it with C. So forth. But it's all being done prior to the building site. Now, can I shoot this real hard at you? If you think you're coming in here building, it ain't going to work. You better fit it together out there. Amen. Because, see, I'm not, I don't know what you do on the job. I don't know how many dirty jokes you tell. I don't know what your action is at work. I, I, all I know is when you come in here, you got your hands in the air and you're praising the Lord uh, and you're shouting, Jesus, uh, uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, uh, when the final inspection comes, uh, uh, my God knows uh, I'm the very heart of mankind. Amen. He knows where you've been. Yes, you he knows where your thoughts is. No, I'm going to tell you what I feel like. Now, I'm, uh, now they say, people say that those prefab houses are not as nice as when a builder comes in there and builds it on site. They say that. But my son bought a house, or my son-in-law bought a house. In West Virginia, that's a prefab. It was put together, brought on the job, and put up. I said, you ain't nothing but a trailer trash. <laughs> Not down the trailers. I, I like to move into a big, nice, double-wided. But you know what? He said, he said, he said, Bruce, he said, the price... 
of this prefab is no different than the price of a stick home. He said, I had to pay the same money. And what I'm saying to you, the final inspection is coming to you. And you better be looking for the stamp of approval. Because I'm telling you what, you have to have fear. We talked about that this morning. The Word of God should bring fear in your life. And it should just shake your foundation that you've got to do everything. I, I had a phone call the other day uh, saying, I'm going to be at church. I'm going to be at church. I, I'm looking for you. Where you at? Yeah. What, what deterred you from coming to church? What caused you from not showing up for the building? Man, I'm afraid that we're not going to have our building done when he comes back to get that final inspection. We got a move in date. We got to have it done. Oh, my gosh. Are you with me, guys? Boy, I tell you, you guys are getting awful quiet on me. I think that I'm in a Methodist church. Yeah. You know what? Here it is. Here it is. The word says it. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Woo! Man, that's good stuff right there. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Boy, I want you to know something. The final inspection is coming up. Man, I am, are you afraid? I've never met a guy come through to do a final inspection smiling. I mean, he act like he just got in a fight with somebody. Meaner than a junkyard dog. Just ready to make you mad. Ready to catch something that you've done wrong. You know, they come through the one inspection at church and said the water fountain wasn't right. Too high. Then they come through, I, depends on what wheelchair you're in. Then he walks right out on the porch. And you know how he got them spindles on the porch? He said, you guys are an inch off. Or not, it was a half inch off. And I had a builder that no decoding. He put it right on the money, but the guy just was ticked off about his wife doing something wrong. I don't know. <laughs> but let me share something with you. The final inspection. And you know what he done to me? It just ticked me off too. I didn't want to fix it. I said, baloney on it. I put enough money and time in this. I got an attitude. Ooh, I'm talking to somebody right now. You know what? Just because preacher says it, that don't mean a hill of beans. But when the inspector tells you to do it, what kind of light was I to my people? They didn't know it. I kept it hid. I mean, I had a water fountain half inch too high, spindles a half inch, and I couldn't even get the stamp of approval. You said, is it that serious? I begged the guy. I said, it's not really a, it's not life or death. There's no kid can get his head through there, and there's no wheelchair that can't get under that fountain to get a drink. And by the way, I don't have no handicapped people in my church. How important is it for that final inspection? How important is it for him to sign off on it? Boy, that should be challenging you that tonight to do something. I'm telling you that that's out on Facebook. You, you folks sit at home and you still, there's nothing wrong with you. There's, there's, 
you're over your COVID, you're over your, you're over everything else, and you're still sitting at home staring and looking at the walls and saying, yeah, but what are you in it for? Aren't you somebody dying, lost around you, going to hell? I've got a son that's dying and going to hell. Hey, if I stay home with him, what am I going to do to win him to the Lord? Somebody better jump up and shout and take a recess and give him praise. Hey, I'm not in it for myself. I, I'm in it to see souls saved. I, I, you can stay home if you want to, I, I'm, but I'm I'm going to tell you, I, and there's a final inspection I, I coming, and you better have the stamp of approval. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. If I get COVID, I still come to church. I'm serious. That's probably why I didn't get it. Because I love God that much. Amen. You say, preacher, have you ever come to sick? When you sick, yeah. I came when I've been sick. I've come when my head felt like it was going to go off my shoulders. I've come to church no matter what. Folks, you say, or do you, is it, I'm telling you, if you get over COVID and you don't come to church, something's wrong. Yep. Yep. I feel preaching on me. Because I tell you what, if our preachers don't preach, I, walk, I go down the road and I see this church closed, that church closed. I say, why? Why? They don't. Who said that? Thank you, sissy. Man, we've got to get back to church. Amen. 21 is coming up. And I'd hate to go into 21. I was thinking about Fairview. I was, Brother Dennis, I was thinking about it. When I was thinking about building this church, the building is not, the, this building is bad shape. I want to tell you something. If I would bring an inspector in this ch church to get a, an inspection on it, tell me, Mike Branham, what would happen? I'd fail, wouldn't I? I'm going to tell you something. Even this building wouldn't pass inspection. They've got naked wires all over upstairs. What I'm talking about, they're exposed. You go up there, you probably get electrocuted. There's cracks in the in the in, all over. That basement basement's moving and shifting. I mean, we get leaks all the time in here. One day it'll leak, next week it won't. It closes up. It would never pass inspection. But can I share with you back in the Word of God, that building is not this building he's talking about. The building he's talking about is us. The building he talked about, he's going to do a final inspection. When he comes back, shall he find faith upon this world? Shall he find people that's willing to run the race and stand the test of time? Amen. Man, I didn't intend to preach hard like this tonight, but I'm just doing it because I'm part of the building. I don't know what part of the building you are, but can I tell you, Brother Tyler, you're a very important part. I'm dreading vacation. I'm going to take a vacation here next week, and I, or week after next, but I dread it. Because I know when I leave, people were very relaxed. Right. Oh, the pastor's gone. He won't know that I'm gone. Believe me, I check that camera. <laughs> That's why I put that camera in here to keep check on your bald heads. <laughs> Amen. And I want to see it. I'll make sure you're here. You think... Preacher, do you care that much? You ask anybody that's had COVID, have I called them? How many times have I called them? Every week, every day, every other day. Because I care. I'm part of the building. Well, I might as well get you where I'm at. I might as well just take and just box your jaw right now. You got to do better. You know why you got to do better? We need you as a member. I'm going to this side. I know that stung. <laughs> Do you agree with me? 
He needs to be a member of our church, don't he? I, I, I know that. Yeah, good. How's it going? You know I'm telling the truth. You know if you're a building, you get mail at that building, don't you? Where's your mail going? Bless me, brother. Where's your, where's your mail going if you don't got a home place? Amen. Woo! I'm preaching membership now. <laughs> but you're part of the building. Don't be afraid to put your membership somewhere because, hey, somebody said, well, the pastor didn't come see me. Well, are you a member? I don't have to visit you. You don't, you don't care no more about putting your... Hey, you're part of my building. Yeah. Hey, if you don't care. <laughs> you know I'm telling the truth. I'm feeling good right now. Man, you've got to have a address where God can send you the mail. I, I, listen, I'm preaching to you for your lives. Amen. You're a building. You got to get right. You got to get saved. You got to be baptized. Then you take membership. Then you do, do communion. We're going to do communion here in another couple of weeks. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Why are you guys so quiet? Because <laughs> some of you need to take membership. You say, how important is that? Well, when you die, when you die, brother, sister, when you die, you put went to Faith Chapel. <laughs> Sister Anna Dyes was a member of the Faith Chapel for 80 years. <laughs> <laughs> now, which one sounds better? Just wits. Sinners go to church. But Christians are members. I'm loving on you. You feel it? He ain't saying nothing. I've never seen Cat get his tongue before in my life. He's going to sing for me. Boy, I tell you what, God's with that boy. Boy, I tell you what, I love, love to, I want to sign him on. You know, that's a, you know, part of the game, man. You know, Cleveland lost today. Kind of hurt me. I kind of wasn't real churchy after all that. I, I mean, I, it, you know, it was, you know what it was? Can, can I share with you? You know why they didn't win? Because they had people sick at home. Say it again. They had them three or four guys that had been with COVID. Six of, them. six of them. Well, praise the Lord. If they had six of them, that's enough to carry a dead person right there. <laughs> if they had six more people in that game, we would, hey, the, listen, somebody said, well, the quarterback done the mistake, but listen, we all make up this building. Amen. Amen. Whoa, man, it's coming down. Hey, we're all part of the team. Yeah. The quarterback wasn't comfortable with the ones he was using because the ones he usually used was six. Right. Wasn't their fault because they're sick. But boy, better, you think about it, if they get better, get over COVID, and they just stay on for a couple more. Hey, it's kind of like Preacher Williams said, some of my people said after the first year we'll come back. What makes a difference after the first year? Uh, start right now. Right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Pastor Williams said, I don't understand these people. Wait until they feel like going back to church. I'm not talking to you guys. I've got a whole audience. Is people on? <laughs> Share it. Share it out there. Build her back up. Yeah. Don't let them go off. <sighs> Listen to me. It's tough to be a pastor right now. It's tough to see people just quit. And lose their desire. I talked to a young couple. They, I said, you guys got COVID? No. Have you had? No. No, we don't have. We just, we just don't want to carry it back into our house. I said, what? 
I said, do you go to Walmart? Yeah. Do, 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 you go, do you go to town, doc? Yeah. You know who's taking it into the prisons? It's not the prisoners. They don't get to go nowhere. That's right. It's the workers going into them. That's why I'm here, folks. I'm not going, hey, boy, I'll tell you what, we're buildings. We're his building. Amen. And if we're not here, there's no building. That's right. That's right. That's right. If God's people are not sitting in these pews, there's no building. Amen. If you believe the scripture, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, you need to be here. Amen. I want you to get back in church, guys. Stay in church. Be focused in church. Yes. Because I'm going to tell you what, I still got a vision, but I cannot have that vision without you folks. Great. And without a vision, people perish. 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 Yes. I kind of, I wasn't joking with him. I'm scared to death of losing him. I am because he's very talented. And I'm not just saying that to blow his head up. But if I get his name on this roll call, I've got a commitment. Yep. It's kind of, I'm going to tell you what it's really like. I'm, I just like to be mean to you right now. <laughs> it's kind of like this. And by the way, thanks for the Christmas gift. You already gave it to me. That's why I'm preaching like this. <laughs> it's kind of like this. The commitment of being married. Why don't you just live together? Why would it be wrong? I mean, you, you make it to one another. Now, I'm talking to you, ain't I? You know, you come into God's house as well. Or, or who, who did he say was the husband there? He left us in charge. I about got you to take membership right now. You, if I call for membership right now, you'd jump right up and say, Come in, preacher. I'm going to tell you something. I love, but very vital part of the church. Been here for quite a few years now. We, we'd miss him if he wasn't here. But you know what I do? You know what goes through his mind every once in a while? Now, because you've got a paper, I remember marrying you guys. And I remember signing that thing. I'm talking. It, it's a comfortable thing to know that, isn't it? You're hooked, right? <laughs> no separation. We don't believe in divorce, right? Amen. <laughs> because you don't have your name on this book. There's things go through your mind. Well, maybe I want to go there. I may want to go here later. You, come on. Not a long time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We, we're coming on with it. Boy, I'm working on, I'm working on him, ain't I, guys? Where are you guys at? You should be sad. Hey, man, get him, sick him. <laughs> He's going to sing for me in a little bit. He knows I'm, I love him. But you see how important it is to every man to play this game that, or to build in this church? Final inspection. I don't know. Dennis will probably tell you. That inspection, that final inspection is going to be a rough one. The Bible said we all stand before the great white throne. That's right. And I know there's churches, some churches, and I don't understand all of what they say, but I know I'm going to be judged every man according to his work. Yep. Every man. No matter who you are, right. you're going to stand before him. And he that is without spot or blemish, he's going to sit on the right. That's me and you, Brother Roger. And when I get that stamp of approval, you talking about shouting. If you don't like shouting, don't get on the clouds with me. It's going to be a great day. You got to live close, Brother Gary. Amen. I mean, you got to stay in that book. You got to read that book. Amen. Come, sing. <laughs>